Hey everyone! So today I'm going to cover how to make bows for cosplay, or rather fake bows, because try as I might, I've never been very good at just getting a strip of fabric and tying it into a bow. I mean, I've practiced this a few times because I've done this intro several times already, and that's still the best bow that I can tie. One of the ears is noticeably larger than the other, they're a bit droopy. For once, one of them isn't upside down. Usually one of the ears is upside down or inside out, and they end up looking a bit twisted. Also, the knot always goes diagonally, rather than the straight down knot that you get in animation. They just don't look as good, and of course they can undo during the day. So I never like actually tying a bow. I like making a fake bow, however a lot of tutorials that I've seen for this and a lot of costumes that come with these cafe bows only use a single piece for each ear which I find gives these really sharp edges and it does just look a bit flat so we're going to do a slightly fuller bow than that. So first off I'm going to show how to make them out of ribbon because it's obviously a lot easier if you've already got fabric or whatever that's in strips. Now the first piece you need has to be twice the length of the overall width that you want both the ears to come to. With ribbon I'll find that's uh, usually quite short, because with ribbon if they get too big they can start to droop. Remember if you're using satin ribbon after each cut you can use a lighter just to heat seal the edges. Do do this on a test piece first though. Once you've got this length pull it together in a loop so that the ends come together and I'll usually put a couple of little fastening stitches in there. Now with your loop, pinch it so that that join is at the centre back. And as you can see, that will make our, our little ears bit. Again, put a couple of stitches in just to fasten it, and don't worry about these stitches being visible from the front, because that will be covered by the knot. We'll put that off to one side, and the next bit we want is twice the length of each tail, because it will form both tails. And now is the point when we want to think about what shape we want the tails to be. So particularly with ribbon, it's really easy if you want to put the inverted V into it. You can literally just cut it in, and again heat seal it up. Now when you've got your length, you want to kind of pinch it together, and fold it over at an angle to make a little V shape. And we're going to stick that at the back where our join is, and add a couple of more stitches just to secure it. And it's starting to look pretty good. Now what you want to do is put your needle in at the bottom, bring it back out around the middle, and put it back in around the top, just to do a really loose stitch, and then you can pull it so that it condenses down a bit. And then you might want to put a couple more stitches in just to, to secure that into place. And that's just to give us the gathering at the centre. <clears throat> now for the centre wrap bit, you want a quite short piece of ribbon. And for ribbon, I always find that the ribbon itself is going to be much too wide. If you tried to put it in like that, it would squish it outwards and make it all look a bit rubbish. Often I end up folding it in half or even in thirds to get it the width that I want. Once you've got that, get the centre around the front and pull the other bits around the back between the two ears and between the two tails. And then you just want a few more stitches in there to secure that in place. This is the point where you want to be careful not to let your stitches come through to the front, because anything that comes through to the front of the little centre wrap will be visible. Although, if you do mess up and have a few stitches on the front, you can always add a bead or a rhinestone or a little flower or something to cover it up and to add a little bit of sparkle. And then once you've got that made, that is your, your bow finished. 
I always leave my thread long at this point so I can sew it onto whatever I'm putting it on or I can sew a little pin backing onto it but you can use glue if that's easier. Now with fabric it's pretty much the same deal obviously ribbon looks good from both sides generally so we haven't had to do anything to it the fabric however will need to fold over and have double so that we can stitch it and bring it inside out which means that we've got our, our strips here for the ears section and the tail section but these are actually folded over double so what you want to do is you want to again measure the length you need and the width put that and have it doubled so you can just draw that onto folded over fabric and cut it out or you can cut out two separate amounts of the width and length that you need and sew them together really importantly for the ears it's a good idea to bring them together and just scrunch them hold them up and see what you think now obviously this is really droopy we don't want it to be this droopy at all there are a couple of ways around this for a, a medium small or medium sized bow, I'd say this is kind of medium, the easiest way is interfacing. You can either use iron on or sew in interfacing or a thicker thing such as you know horsehair braid, canvas interfacing, whatever you want to use. But I like to stick with nice simple iron on interfacing. Now depending on how stiff you want it to be and how heavy your fabric is, you might want to interface the whole section you might want to fold it double and just interface one side obviously interface it on the inside or you might just want to interface the section that would be the overall width of the ears obviously the more interfacing you have in there the firmer it'll be but for this I'm just going to interface one side and we'll sew it together after that So with our interfacing iron onto one side, I'm just going to fold it back, pin it and sew it together. So I've sewn it together, clipped my corners and I've left a hole in the centre of the longest side to turn it inside out. If you keep your hole here or right at one of the ends, it'll be hidden by the central band when we actually make our bow. So you want to press it flat and stitch up the little hole now it's entirely up to you whether you want the crisper side where the interfacing has been attached or the slightly softer side where it's looser if you've used sew on in iron on interfacing like I have either way we do exactly the same we bring the ends together tack them together along the whole length And then just fold them so that that bit is in the center and we've got our ears ready now we want to do like we did with the ribbon bow we want to try and bring it together but we don't want to just scrunch it so again do big stitches gathering stitches in and out through both layers and gently pull them and if you keep your gathering stitches quite even you should be able to get a nice even gather on there and then put a few stitches right through the whole lot just to secure it all in place now for the tails these only really need interfacing if you want them to stick outwards from the main bow or come off at a strange angle if you want them to just fall nicely over a skirt or something you don't have to interface those otherwise it's very much the same you need a long strip folded double or two long strips now if you want to reduce bulk at the central bow you can narrow this up so instead of having it just as a strip 
You can have it come inwards at the centre, just so there's less fabric there. This is also the point where you need to decide what ends you want. If you want those inverted V ends, you'll need to stitch those in now and clip them properly. I just want slightly slanted ends though. And then we've got our tails ready to add to the whole thing. Again, find their middle point, whichever way around you want them. Fold them so there's a, a bit of a V so that they're hanging neatly. Stack them at the back and sew them on with a couple of little stitches. The band just needs a little rectangle of fabric folded in half, made into a tiny tube, folded inside out. You can, if you prefer, just fold the edges in and hem them, but I find making a tube is easier. And with our little tube complete, it's exactly the same deal. Wrap it around the centre, making sure the middle of that is at the front and the ends are at the back. Stab yourself on the needle that you've left in there. Let's, uh, let's remove that. And then sew it together neatly. And there you have it, neater, larger bows. Be sure to poof the ears out a little bit, get in there and make sure that it's showing off how nicely 3D they are. I'm going to do a later tutorial on how to do wireframe inserts for really large or heavy bows, but there's so many different shapes that they kind of require their own video. Other than that, best of luck with your sewing. Let me know if there's any other tutorials you'd like soon, and please do check out my Facebook and Patreon, which will be linked below. See you next time. If I find my needle, 